international climate scientist and professor at the University of California in Santa Barbara. Good to have you with us. So uh, the expedition leader, Dr. Marcus Rex, um, is, is making this dire warning because of the disappearance of summer sea ice. Um, do you agree that we may have reached a tipping point in the Arctic? The Arctic is warming at three times the rate of the rest of the world. The center Arctic is actually warming at four times the global rate. So these new uh, scientific findings confirm what we've known for some time. We're losing the reflective sea ice that currently controls so much of the global climate system. We've lost about half of it and it's uh, thinner. Uh, this uh, new science says the warm Atlantification, warm waters from the Atlantic coming in, making it harder to regrow the long-term thick multi-year ice. So what's gonna happen when we lose the rest of the Arctic sea ice, which could happen within a decade, maybe 15 years, according to other scientists, is that we will add the equivalent of one trillion tons of CO2 uh, on top of the 2.4 trillion tons we've put in since pre-industrial times. And what this is going right. to do and, is... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, and that has massive implications, not just for the Arctic region, but for the rest of the world. Well, it starts a wicked cascade that will collapse the permafrost, used to be permanent frost, that will release more CO2, more methane, a super greenhouse gas, and more N2O, another powerful greenhouse gas. And that will cascade down the rest of the world. So uh, if we lose the rest of the sea ice, we may lose control of the climate system. It is a key feedback. And the best way to slow down the loss is to cut the super climate pollutants. That includes HFC refrigerants, black carbon soot, and methane. And if you can do that, which the world can, we can cut the rate of Arctic warming by two thirds. Then we have a chance of staying in the game to uh, decarbonize the world at 2050 and have a uh, relatively uh, safe climate. Uh, and of course, countries have, have committed to bringing down their emissions. Um, we've had several goals. We're, we're hopefully looking at new goals uh, at the next um, climate change conference uh, which is, is going to take place here in the UK. Um, if countries manage to bring down their emissions, I mean, can this deterioration be halted? Presumably it can't be reversed, but, but can it be halted at a, a, a sustainable level? Well, the first thing is we can slow it way down. So you've seen the, the focus shifting recently, uh, uh, in large part because of President Biden and John Kerry and the, the new energy they're bringing into the climate uh, policy discussions, that we are going to focus on 1.5 degrees uh, of warming. That's going to be the, the trip point. We're going to stop the world from warming beyond that. Second, we're going to focus on winning the sprint to 2030. We've got to slow down warming in the next decade. That's why these super pollutants become so important. And then there are um, other things that can be done to regrow ice. These are experimental so far, but one uh, by Dr. Leslie Fields has silica beads that are um, safe in the environment. If you sprinkle them on top of the ice, it enhances the reflectivity, sends more heat back to space, allows the ice to regrow to multi-year ice. Sir David King um, at um, Oxford also has a program where he's looking at ways to regenerate ice using um, ships that nucleate more cloud cover. And uh, so we're, we're getting some good action here. But the first thing to do, slam on the brakes by cutting the short-lived super climate pollutants. Indeed. And, and let's hope that that is what happens. Derwood Zelke, uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us.